HP Tuners did a stealth drop on us with a new feature that you guys might be interested in if you're into the CAN bus like I am. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and we're doing a quick video on a new CAN bus feature that has been dropped that really hasn't been talked about. In fact, I didn't know about it until PRI and I was talking to, well, we won't even get into it, but I was talking to one of the people from HP Tuners and he said, what would be a feature that you would like to see in HP Tuners if you were to able to get whatever you wanted to add in there and I thought about it for a while and I said, you know what, that's a tough question because I've been using HP tuners for so long. I'm so tied up in the system that most of the features that I like are because they were in HP tuners. And I thought, you know what, I would like a way to use the ProLink cable to talk to different CAN bus devices and in to be able to do custom CAN bus messaging with it. And he goes, download the beta, it's in there. And so we're gonna take a look at it and talk about it. It's still being developed out. It's not fully fleshed out. Let's jump over to the whiteboard here, take a look at it. So uh, what do we got here? We've got a, well, we've got my Dodge Viper pulled up. So this is kinda cool. And it only works one way so far, but we come in here and we do channel config advanced properties. That's going to pop up a new window. Let me pull it over here. We got the definition overrides. We don't care about that. But you see, we've got two new tabs on here CAN inputs and CAN outputs. CAN inputs, not there yet. But, but, it means they're working on it. So I'm super excited about the ability to tie into CAN devices and bring back their information and log them in the data logger. For now though, we do have CAN outputs and this is a standard looking CAN bus table. And there's Bubba. He came upstairs to bark at me. Bubba's even excited about this. So we're gonna add a new row in here and you can see uh, up or down, we can change the order of that we're pulling things in. Then we have the frequency that we're sending. We're sending this data out. This is gonna go out on the CAN bus output on the ProLink. Gotta have the ProLink feature, right? Uh, so we've got one hertz uh, all the way down to 100, and then bus extension zero. That's the only bus that we're gonna have available because of that's the only CAN bus output that we have. So this is where it gets interesting. Can ID, this can be whatever we want to set this to. So this is going to be our device that we're talking to. We'll say this is can ID number one. And based on it, we can say it's an 11-bit message or a 29-bit message. We'll keep it as simple. Everything for the most part is going to talk the 11-bit message. Some newer devices will talk to 29-bit message. And then uh, DLC, I have no clue what all this means. Uh, but Indianus is the message format. Essentially, you've got a message format, and if you change the Indianus, it puts one in front of the other. Without going super deep into the way CAN bus works, it's a bunch of 8-bit bytes in a specific order, and the Indianus changes the order. So we're going to leave this on little Indian for now, and just know that whatever we put in this would be what we would configure on our end device. And I'll talk about some of the options that we have, but whenever we click on uh, byte zero in this case, we're going to go ahead and it's going to say byte start index zero, that's the one that we clicked on, and number of bytes. Now, if we go with one byte, that's going to give us 0 to 256. We go to 2, it gets exponentially bigger. So we got to make sure that what we're logging, we give it enough. I'm going to go ahead and select 2 because that gives us 32,656 or somewhere around there, 32,000 is going to be the max uh, based on the uh, whether or not it's signed or unsigned, whether or not it's positive or negative. All of our numbers, for the most part, are going to be positive, unless you're doing manifold air pressure, you know, and, and if you're doing it in KPA, it's still going to be positive. There is some that would be negative, but in this case, we will add in our parameter. Oh, and it opened up over here. Let me drag my parameter window over to the whiteboard. We can do the same thing that we do all the other times. 
show only parameter channels that we have, and that's going to be ones that are being logged right here. So we go engine general RPM. Yep, sounds good. There we go. Now we have an output that we can scale. In this case, the output are, it would be the input. RPM is multiplied by one, so we're just getting the RPM. But if we need to, we could add offsets. And where you get into situations like that is if you want to add or take something that has a decimal and convert it into an integer, say it has one decimal point, we could multiply it by 10 and say that, you know, whenever we decode the message on the other side, we would divide it by 10 to get the decimal point in there. So static value is going to be what it sends whenever we're not reading anything. And so we just go ahead and put zero in there and hit OK. So where did it go? Why did it not show up? Mm -mm -mm. Let's try this again. That's interesting. I never really actually tried to put one in there. Okay, there it is. So engine speed RPM. Let's make that two bytes. There we go. So now you can see that it's overlapping byte zero and byte one. And you can see that this is eight bytes. So theoretically on message x zero zero x zero zero one, it's a hex address, uh, we could get four two byte parameters in there. Now the cool thing about this is we could save this and uh, go in and, and put it into our MPVI2 Pro data logging so we can leave the thing plugged in, but we want to write all of our parameters to that. And then whenever we hook this up, a great example is like the AEM display dashes, completely configurable CAN bus. You would go in and make your input parameters look exactly like this table, and it would then be able to pull your data parameters from your factory ECU and put them on a digital dash. Sorry, Holly guys, it's not gonna work for you because Holly does not like you. AKA, Holly does not have open CAN bus, things like that. But there's a lot of dashes out there that are more advanced that are gonna let you do custom CAN bus messaging to bring in these parameters. And now you can do custom messaging to export the parameters to the dash. See how powerful this is going to be? We're going to do some testing on this later on. I've got to get a bunch of moving parts together here to set all this up because I've got the equipment to do CAN bus sniffing where we can see the messages coming out and, and all the other jazz. I even have a dash that we can test it out with to see the messages coming from a factory ECU to a digital dash. Where that's really cool is if you've got your resto mod or something like that that you're running an LS platform on with the factory ECU and you don't want to mess with all the analog gauges, go ahead and throw that digital dash in. Look like you're running that fancy standalone for a lot cheaper and still get all the parameters that you need to build that dash out. And eventually, whenever we get the input stuff, and you may have heard me talk about this in the past, one of the things specifically is, uh, let's go in here to add channel. There's already all these devices down here. Some of these are CAN bus, uh, you know, so just be aware that this feature isn't necessarily new, but having the option to do this is new. Uh, a great example is this mega squirt right here. Uh, this is uh, parameters I had HP tuners add into the scanner years ago for the Super Auto. Uh, and it, essentially it's because I had that secondary fuel injection set up and it allowed me to monitor the pulse width while I was scanning the factory ECU. Uh, what I would really look forward to and wanted to get around to doing, but I never did, was add all of the EGT parameters that I was also logging through the Megasquirt. Well, once they get the, the rest of this kind of built out and, and into beta testing, then you could literally go in there, find the EGT or set up the EGT outputs in the mega squirt and then bring those into the scanner and whenever you're scanning you could scan from a third party device like that so it opens up a world of possibilities on the factory platform with the ProLink and the ProLink cable. Remember, if you buy the three, you get the ProLink features, you're going to have to buy the cable. If you've got a 2.2 Plus, you're going to have to buy the features 
and get the cable, you're probably just better off tr paying to trade it in for a three if you've got two or two plus. But keep your eyes peeled. There will be plenty more content on this later on as we dive more and more into some of these features that they just kind of stealth dropped out of nowhere and didn't tell us. Maybe we should have been reading the change logs. I don't know. I'm really bad about that. I just download the beta every couple uh, weeks or so, maybe every month or two. And most of these things just like pass like a ship in the dark. Maybe I need to get into better contact with the engineers and be like, hey, what's new with this beta? Huh? I don't know. You guys tell me. So... Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. If you got any ideas for what this might be able to be used for, there's also some really cool CAN bus based relays that Mike Noonan over at uh, EFI Connection has told me about. Theoretically, we could probably set this up to work some magic with those even maybe. I don't know. I haven't dug into them that much. He's doing some cool stuff with them. I'd like to talk about them more, but I just got so much going on. That's a 2024 project, if you know what I mean. But listen, I want to thank you as always for stopping by the Garage Member ABT. Always be tuning.